you've seen how we can attach properties and methods to structs and how each struct has its own unique copy of those properties so that calling methods on the struct uses the struct's own properties as opposed to properties from other structs of the same instance. Sometimes, only sometimes, you want to add a property or method to the struct itself, not to a single instance of it. This lets you access it directly. I use this a lot in SwiftUI for two reasons. First, I use it for example data to say, here's my example instance of a struct to work with. And second, to store constant data that has to be accessed in various places in my program. First, I want to look at a simplified example of how to create and use these so-called static properties and methods in Swift. We could say there's a struct called school. This has one static property a variable called student count equal to zero. And also a static method called add takes a student string, prints out the joint, and adds one to student count. Now notice a static keyword in here. This means both student count and the add method belong to the school struct itself, and not to an individual instance of a school. And to use it as a result, we'd write the following school.addStudentTaylorSwift or print school.studentCount. I haven't had to make a new school. Let school equal school, whatever, blah, blah, blah. none of that. You access the property and method directly on the struct. This is because they're both static. They don't exist uniquely in every school instance, but exist only once across all school instances. They're all shared. This should also explain why we can modify student count. Here we're saying student count plus equals one without marking the add method as being mutating. We don't need it here. We only have to have mutating as a keyword or times when the struct might be a constant or a variable. And there is no instance here. It's always a struct itself. There's never a constant or variable school to work with. It's the struct itself. So it naturally is happy to mutate. Now, if you want to mix and match static and non-static properties and methods, there are two rules. First up, if you want to access non-static stuff, regular properties, regular methods from static stuff, i.e. regular proper, uh, static properties and static methods, well, you can't. It is not possible. To be fair, it doesn't make sense. You're in the regular school struct, calling add student, and how could you possibly refer to an exact instance of school? Which one would you refer to? You don't know. There's no way of saying, oh, I mean that instance over there. The other way around though, if you're in a non-static method, a regular method, or a non-static property, for example, you can read the static versions. They work, because you're, you're from a, you know, one of 10 instances, you're reading the whole struct, that's allowed. Here, just right before, you just say school.studentCount or school.add, whatever, like you would elsewhere. If you're inside the struct like we are here, you're in a non-static method, a regular method, you can also say self.studentCount with a capital S. And that's different from self with a lowercase s. When you say self with a capital S, things change. Now remember, self with a lowercase s means the current value of a struct. With a capital S, we mean the current type of struct we're on right now. It is really easy to forget the difference between these two things. But if you think about it, it kind of matches the way Swift works. So you're sitting here thinking, oh, self here, self there, which is which? Think of it like this. When we have the value as 55 for integer, hello for a string, true for a Boolean, that's self with a lowercase s. With a uppercase s, Swift uses that everywhere for types. 
capital I in int, capital S in string, capital B in bool, and so it makes sense for self with a capital letter to refer to the type. Lowercase, like true, is for the current value. Now, if you listen carefully, that sound you can hear is a thousand other learners saying, why the heck is this needed? And I get it, this does seem at first glance like a really redundant feature. So I want to show you the two ways I use this technique in my own code. First, let's switch to Xcode. Um, I use static properties a lot to organize common data in my programs. For example, I might have a struct called user settings to store shared values I use in many places, or app data. I could say, uh, let's do struct app data, static let version equals 1.3 beta 2. And then static let save file name, where I save my settings, be uh, settings.json. Or static let home URL be https com slash slash dub 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 hacking with swift dot com. And using this approach, everywhere I've got to try and check on something like my app's version number. So the about screen, some debug output, some logging information, making a support email, if people have problems or whatever, I can just read app data dot version anywhere in my program. And it works. So it's cleanly a way to say, here's all my fixed data, anywhere you want to, bang. Static makes sense here. I'm going to make a new app data instance and then read the version from there. The second reason I commonly use static data is to store example data for my struct. Now, I just see as you progress, SwiftUI works best when you can see previews of your layouts as you work. And these previews often require sample data. For example, if you're showing a screen that has data on one employee, you're looking at one particular person in the company, you'll want to be able to show an example employee so you can see in the preview screen, your layout looks correct. It all looks good. I think this is best done using an example property on a struct, which is static. We'll say uh, struct employee. Let's say let username be a string and let password be a string. And that's my employee struct done normally. But here I'll say static let example equals an employee. And this wants the two fields, username and password. Username will be C Federighi. And password, I'll do uh, Hair Force One. Obviously, a, a brilliant password. Uh, and this way, whenever I have to have an employee, anywhere in my example code or previewing stuff, I can just say employee.example. And it's available everywhere in your program automatically. It's really nice. You couldn't just use a regular let that be a bad idea because now employee contains an employee and therefore this employee will contain another employee will contain another employee contain another employee forever making it static means employees themselves don't contain employees that'd be weird it's just available on the struct for easy organization like i said at the beginning there are only a handful of places where static properties and methods make perfect sense. But they're still a really useful tool to have in your toolkit. And you will know when you need them. Like this kind of thing, it makes just perfect sense.